Hello YouTube and uh, welcome to Weld Fever. Uh, today what we're going to do is some stick welding and if you'll notice I have some different uh, stick electrodes out today that we can uh, experiment on. And mainly what I'm going to cover is uh, the difference in how to uh, handle these rods. Uh, there are two types of rods that need to be oscillated. Those are rods that end in a zero or a one. So really most uh, common rods are 6010 and 6011. Those two rods need to be oscillated in order to uh, be applied properly. The rest of the rods are considered drag rods for all intents and purposes. Uh, basically all you have to do is just pull them across uh, and in some instances a light uh, back and forth or weave motion is preferable. But we're going to go through that today and uh, I'm going to show you some of the differences and how, uh, how it will behave. So here we go. So I'm going to try to touch on a good variety of rods here. Uh, we have first of all a 6011 rod. Uh, hopefully you guys can see this. It's a very thin one. It's uh, 330 seconds uh, in diameter. And then we have a Lincoln Electrode 6010 rod. Uh, this one is a 1 8 rod. Then I have uh, some 6013 rod, also 1 8. And I have some 7018 rod here, a couple of those, 1 8. And last but not least, uh, I have this uh, 308L 16 rod, which is a stainless steel rod. Kind of an unusual thing, you don't see that too often, but. Uh, you'll see just how uh, nice this rod actually works. So uh, let's go ahead without any further ado and uh, get right to it. Now what we're going to be welding on today is uh, what I refer to as my metal log here. Uh, this was a welding project I did in welding school some time ago and basically it was to learn how to uh, pad stuff up and so there is uh, a unique row of padding all around this thing as you can see it's just row after row after row of padding 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 nothing but padding it's all different kinds of rods all over it too so some of them look a little bit better than others and uh, some of them had to oscillate some of them had to twist around but the end result is it kind of looks like a log anyway we're gonna go ahead and uh, run some uh, some of these electrodes on this thing so here we go Okay, so the first rod that I'm using here is the uh, E6011 rod. Uh, 6011 rod behaves uh, very much like 6010 does. Uh, the primary reason why it was created uh, was so that people who only have an AC machine can use it because it is uh, runnable on AC, unlike uh, 6010. So here I am chipping away at slag. You notice I'm doing it very gently. You don't really want to hammer on it really that hard. In fact, the chipping hammer is really used and intended to be used to drag rather than strike. So uh, now we have a clean well and I'll start again. Whenever you do a start and stop, you do have to clean slag out of the way. Otherwise, if you start back up again over an area that hasn't been going to get some uh, slag inclusion. Also here in this shot, notice that I'm oscillating the rod as I mentioned earlier since it is a 6011 rod. I'm basically going out and back in, out and back in, out and back in, back, kind of like a back and forth motion. And what this does is it allows the puddle to solidify a little bit and then when you come out, when you come back in, you can uh, go over the layer and uh, this uh, you know, makes for a nice looking weld and it also allows uh, for uh, more weld uh, placement and uh, better penetration. Okay YouTube, we're going to do the uh, 6010 rod now. Uh, this particular rod runs best, or can only be run actually, on DC positive. And uh, because it's an eighth, uh, I like to run this one at about 90, 95 amps, which I'll be running it at 95 to start off and see how we go. Once again, as before, I'm oscillating back and forth since this is an oscillating rod. Uh, you notice the in and out action. <laughs> I had to stop here because I forgot to put my uh, 
fume extractor on, and uh, so that's what I'm doing. I'm sure you'll hear it fire up in just a second. Uh, as you notice here, I'm cleaning up uh, the area that uh, I had previously welded before I start back up again, because I as I mentioned earlier, uh, if you don't clean it off, if you don't remove the slag prior to starting up again, that slag will enter into your weld and you will have slag inclusions, which is a defect. There I use a little soapstone to mark a line. I find it uh, very helpful for me to put that bright white soapstone down uh, just to give me a, a reference line so that I can follow uh, the pattern straight. You would think with all that light that it would be enough for me to be able to see it, but you know sometimes uh, the tendency is to go astray, and uh, nobody's perfect. And so when I can use something to my advantage to help me put down a straighter, nicer, uh, better executed weld, uh, believe me, I'm going to do it. And so that's why I uh, went ahead and did that there. Okay, so I spared you having to see me chip the slag off, and uh, I just wanted to show you the finished weld. It's a little hard to see. I'm sorry about that, but uh, you can see that it's uh, relatively straight, although there are some issues, and we'll deal with those in a bit. Okay, so I'm continuing on with another bead. Uh, what's happening right now, though, unbeknownst to me and to all of you watching, is that I'm starting to go adrift, and my line is becoming not quite as straight as I would like it to. Now right now when I stop you're going to see what I'm starting to do here. And here, here is the scene where I'm now starting to make a line to try to correct it. And right into the next one. What I'm doing here now is I'm using actually a 7018 rod now. Um, kind of a strange way to jump into it but I'll explain a little bit more further. And I'm weaving back and forth in order to try to stretch out the area that I marked with soapstone where my line has kind of gone adrift. I'm hoping that if I fill it a little bit more that I'll be able to straighten out the line. We'll see what happens. Okay, so here is the beautiful thing about working with 7018 and when you do it right. And it's coming up right now. And here... It is. Wow, look at that. There's nothing nicer than watching slag come off like that. Okay, YouTube, so we've got a few beads down here. I'm going to do uh, one more real quick uh, with 7018. Uh, for 7018, the amperage on this one is uh, direct current electrode positive again, and set at 90 amps. So, I'll turn on all the uh, systems and let it happen. Okay, kind of a bouncy start here, but uh, now I'm going to continue with the uh, 7018. And my goal is to try to straighten this guy out. Uh, I've identified that I'm kind of got a little bit of a high spot, and I'm trying now to add a little bit more filler material in that uh, high spot so that I can uh, even it out and make a nice straight line. After all, this is a pad, and that's kind of what we want to see. We want to see straight lines uh, slightly overlapping each other so that it looks like one continuous pad with no uh, no peaks and valleys just one smooth continuous pad as best you can okay and here it is the finished weld uh, my hope here is that it's going to reveal that we've straightened out the line a heck of a lot more than what it was and lo and behold we did had a definite high spot in about the middle of the weld and I've managed to be able to bring it uh, to lower that high spot to where we have pretty much a strip eh, fairly straight weld across it's a heck of a lot better than what it was and it's a it's a perfectly acceptable result so I'm happy with that so now let's move on to the next rod I'm afraid that's gonna be it for now I want to try to keep this thing uh, relatively short I'll go ahead and uh, continue the rest of this in part two, which will come out within the next couple days or next week at the latest. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please uh, rate it, like it, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and be on the lookout for uh, all the new stuff. Also, don't forget to visit my website, www.weldfever.com. 
Thanks a lot, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.